Your oncologist has told you that you'll be getting treatment for your cancer. This video will give you basic information about the treatment and the common side effects you might experience. We are aware that this may be stressful for you or someone you know. We are committed to helping and supporting you and welcome your questions. Chemotherapy, biotherapy, and immunotherapy are treatments used to help destroy cancer cells or keep them from growing. These treatments may do one or more of the following. Control how quick a cancer tumor can grow when a cure is not possible. Relieve symptoms such as pain. Shrink tumors before surgery or radiation treatment. Cure specific cancers. Help prevent the return of cancer cells to the body by destroying cancer cells that can only be seen by a microscope. Treatment can be given in different ways, including a pill you swallow, a shot in your arm or belly, or through an IV placed in your vein on the day of your treatment. Your doctor or nurse will tell you what kind of treatment you need. This will be determined by your doctor based on your disease type, height, weight, and any other diagnoses you may have. Your oncology nurse will tell you how long your treatments will take each time you come to the office. Sometimes treatment is given through a device called a Mediport. You'll hear doctors and nurses call it a port. A port is placed inside your skin on the right or left side of your upper chest. You'll be sent to a surgeon for this. To access your port, staff will place a needle through your skin to get blood for any tests your doctor orders and to give you your treatment infusions. Your ability to work will depend on how the treatment affects you and your doctor's advice. Your doctor will let you know if working would cause any risks to your health. If you have to miss work for your treatments, we can help fill out forms that your job may request. We have many patients who continue to work full time while completing their treatments. If your treatment plan requires infusions, there are a few things to ease the process. Our treatment rooms are designed for your comfort and are typically cool. Dressing with long sleeves or bringing a blanket is helpful. Bring things to do during your infusion. iPads, portable MP3 players, cell phones, DVD players, books, etc. Bring headphones to listen to your media devices as a courtesy to others. Pack a light lunch or snack to eat while you're away from home. Find out from your oncology nurse or staff if someone is able to be with you during your treatment or if someone is needed to drive you home. Many people have questions about what side effects they may get from treatment. Here are the most common side effects, what you can do to take care of them yourself, and when you should call your doctor or go to an emergency room. Chemotherapy helps destroy cancer cells that rapidly divide and can also affect our normal healthy cells. The normal cells of our body that rapidly divide are located in our hair follicles, the inside of our mouth, stomach, intestines, and inside our bones. Other types of treatment, such as targeted or immunotherapy, do not affect our healthy cells, but can also cause other side effects. Upset stomach and throwing up could happen as a side effect of your treatment. Before you start your treatment, your doctor or nurse will set up a plan to help prevent this. You may also notice your appetite changes and is often less than your normal pattern. This is because your taste buds can change as a result of the medicines you're given. Foods you normally like may not be appealing. Most people notice their appetite returns to normal when their treatment plan is complete. Sometimes the inside of your mouth may feel tender and you can get sores on your tongue, lips, gum line, down your throat, and it may feel painful to swallow. This is called mucositis. Make this recipe fresh every day. One teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking soda mixed in one quart of water. Swish and spit it out before and after each time you eat. Don't use regular mouthwash. It contains alcohol, which can make mucositis worse. Keep your lips moist by putting on lip balm several times a day. Avoid peppermint or menthol flavors. Brushing your teeth and tongue with a soft toothbrush or cotton swab after each time you eat and before you go to bed. Don't use whitening toothpaste or toothpaste that contains alcohol. These have harsh chemicals that can increase the chances you make it sores in your mouth. Take any medicine your doctor has prescribed for you exactly as directed. 
After taking anti-nausea medicine, be sure to wait at least 30 minutes before eating. Suck on mints or hard candy during treatment to help decrease the chances of having a metal taste in your mouth. It can be difficult to eat three big meals each day. Eating smaller amounts of food that are high in calories and protein throughout the day makes it easier for your stomach to process it and may help your body heal quicker. Stay away from foods that are greasy, fried, or extra spicy. They're known to cause upset stomachs. Using natural occurring seasonings can make your food more appetizing and taste better. Supplement shakes are good for in-between meals and have extra calories in them. Use plastic utensils if your food tastes like metal. Eat with friends and family to keep food interesting. Milkshakes or soups are easy to swallow and often are better tolerated. Water is important to keep your body hydrated and your stools healthy. Drink plenty of it when you're in your active treatment plan. Writing down what you eat and drink each day can help your healthcare team know best how to help you if you have stomach side effects. Your bowel movements can change while you're taking your treatment. Constipation is when your stools become very hard and makes going to the bathroom difficult. Eating foods high in fiber and drinking plenty of liquids help to soften stool. If you drink coffee or tea, make sure to drink the same amount of water to help prevent dehydration. Move frequently and exercise if it's part of your normal routine. There are medicines you can buy at any pharmacy or drugstore to help soften your stool and help you have a bowel movement. Your oncology nurse can give you a written plan to follow that will show you what medicine to use and how often. Diarrhea is when you have a bowel movement that is very watery. This can become a problem if it lasts longer than 24 hours. It's sometimes caused by certain cancer treatments, viruses, and by some cancers. Drink extra clear fluids for 12 to 24 hours or until your diarrhea stops. Avoid these foods and drinks until you don't have diarrhea anymore. Milk or dairy products like ice cream, yogurt, cheese. Alcohol, coffee, tea, soft drinks, chocolate, fruit juice. Fried fatty foods can make diarrhea worse. Eat smaller amounts of high fiber foods when you have diarrhea. Eating bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast can help. There are also medicines you can take for diarrhea. Loperamide, also called Imodium, can be bought at any pharmacy. Your doctor or nurse will tell you how many anti-diarrheal tablets to take. Make sure you take the exact amount recommended to help control diarrhea. Stop taking it when your stool is not watery anymore. Always let your doctor or nurse know you needed to take medicine for diarrhea. You need to call the office right away if you take medicine for nausea or vomiting for more than 24 hours without relief. Diarrhea doesn't go away within 24 hours. You're not eating anything at all for greater than two to three days. You notice sores on your lips, tongue or gums or white patchy areas. You have continuous throat pain or difficulty swallowing. You've not had a bowel movement for three to four days or have increased discomfort or stomach pain. You have continual diarrhea even after the steady use of loperamide for 24 hours. You may also be brought into the office for extra IV hydration. Some cancer medicines can cause some blood levels to get low. Your oncologist will be checking your blood levels often when you're getting treatment. Sometimes you may have symptoms from this that need to be reported to your doctor or nurse. Red blood cells help carry oxygen to your brain and body and provide nourishment. Low red blood cells is called anemia. When the amount of red blood cells decreases, your body may not function like it's supposed to. Some of the symptoms you might have can include feeling tired all the time and not able to do the things you could normally do, feeling weak and short of breath after any activity or exercise, getting dizzy or lightheaded when you stand up and feeling like your heart is beating fast, having headaches or chest pains, your skin color is much paler than your normal complexion. Here are some ways you can help yourself. Rest between activities and avoid doing things that make you short of breath. Limit making too many plans in one day to help conserve your energy. Ask friends and family to help you with chores like folding laundry, vacuuming, mopping and other activities that can make you tired. Platelets work like a band-aid for your body. They help your blood to clot so you don't have bleeding. 
Your doctor will do blood tests to check how many platelets you have and will let you know if they're low. A low platelet count is also called thrombocytopenia. Here are some things that may be a symptom of this side effect. Let your doctor or nurse know about it right away. Black and blue bruises on your body that happen when you don't remember injuring yourself. Little red dots under your skin that may look like a rash but aren't itchy. A bloody nose that will not stop bleeding. Bleeding gums when you brush your teeth. Seeing bright red blood when you have a bowel movement. There are several things you can do to help yourself if your doctor or nurse have told you your platelet count is low. Avoid taking other medicines, such as NSAIDs, that can change the way your blood can clot inside your body. Use a soft toothbrush when you brush your teeth. Do not use rectal suppositories, thermometers, or enemas. Be careful when you cook and are using knives, and use an electric razor when shaving. Do not participate in any contact sports, such as football, soccer, karate, bicycling without a helmet, or any other sport where you could fall or be hit by an object. Do things to decrease your chances of falling, such as using a cane to help you walk. Get rid of rugs on your floors that slide easily. They can cause you to trip and fall. White blood cells are the body's defense system and help keep away germs and other things that can cause infection and make you sick. Some symptoms of an infection are fever of 100.5 Fahrenheit or higher, take your temperature if you're having chills, or break out in sweats after having chills, sore throat or pain when you swallow, swelling or redness anywhere in your body, an onset of cough, green or yellow nasal secretions, or pus from a wound, any new pain in your body. To lower the chances of getting infection, try doing the following. Always wash your hands with soap and warm water before you cook or eat, after you use the bathroom, and when you're in a public place. Use hand sanitizer when soap and water aren't available. Use cleaning wipes available at stores to wipe the handles of shopping carts and avoid touching door handles in public places when possible. Stay away from people who are sick. Ask family and friends to stay away from you if they feel like they are sick or coming down with something. Don't drink from the same glass as someone else and use clean utensils when eating. Talk to your doctor or nurse if you need to go to the dentist during the weeks or months you're getting chemotherapy. They'll let you know the best time to get it scheduled. Protect your hands by wearing gloves if you work in your yard or areas that are dirty. Don't get manicures and pedicures. The risk of getting a cut is high. Don't clean up droppings from your pets. Let someone else take care of this for you. Clean your body every day with a gentle soap and warm water. Take care to wipe your bottom well after using the bathroom. You should call the office if your temperature is at 100.5 Fahrenheit or higher, if you have a bleeding that won't stop, if you fall and hit your head and your platelets are low, if you're short of breath or have chest pain, if you feel your heart is racing or beating too fast, if you're dizzy or lightheaded, if you have sudden changes in your vision or headache. Some people might not be able to have children once they have had treatment. It's hard to predict the outcome for one person. Some people are still fertile after treatment and some are not. Your doctor or nurse can let you know if your medicine increases the chances of this happening to you. You should try not to become pregnant or have a child with anyone while you're getting treatment. Babies can be born with birth defects or not at all. Sometimes having sex can be painful or the urge to have sex may be lower due to certain chemotherapy medicines, radiation treatments, hormone therapies, or surgery. Make sure you talk to your partner about this if you have concerns. Let your partner know when you want to try sexual contact. They may be afraid to ask. To prevent exposure during sex, use protection for 48 hours after treatment. Try other things such as touching, kissing, or fondling if your sexual activity is uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to talk with your doctor or nurse about any questions or concerns you have. Your skin is part of the protection for your body. Changes to it are common during treatment. It will be more sensitive to sunlight even if you don't normally get sunburn. Use hats, protective clothing, and sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher. Drink plenty of fluids to keep your skin from getting too dry. Some treatments can cause a rash. Use unscented lotion at least twice a day. Use gloves to wash dishes or use household cleaning products. 
Let your doctor or nurse know right away if you notice any unusual rashes or have itching skin. Not all treatment for cancer will cause hair loss. Your doctor and nurse will let you know if your treatment will cause this or hair thinning. If that is the case, you can expect your hair to begin to thin and fall out a little at a time or in big clumps within two to three weeks after your first treatment. Some people choose to cut their hair short before this happens. Always protect your head when you're outside by wearing a wig, hat, or scarf. There are also treatments available that may decrease hair loss. If you lose your hair or it thins, your head may feel cold when you sleep. Wearing a soft, warm cap will help keep you warm. Wash your scalp with a mild shampoo and pat it dry with a towel. Fatigue is one of the most common symptoms for cancer treatments. It's different from feeling tired from working hard. Fatigue from cancer treatment is sometimes described as whole body exhaustion and can begin soon after starting treatments. Other things that can make you feel extra tired are stress, decreased oral intake or dehydration, anemia, and certain medicines. Sometimes it can last up to six months after treatments have ended. Talk with your doctor or nurse if this happens to you. Here are some energy conserving tips. Schedule busy activities for the days that you are not as tired. Have other people help with chores, cooking, or running errands. Schedule short periods of rest or naps throughout the day. Make sure to drink plenty of fluids and eat small meals that are higher in calories and healthy fats. Light exercise such as walking for short distances or using a stationary bike can also help. The term chemo brain or chemo fog is a common symptom of treatment. This can happen from having fatigue, feeling depressed, experiencing mental distress, as well as from certain medicines. Let your doctor or nurse know if you're having more forgetfulness. Helpful tips. Use a calendar or smartphone to remember appointments and times to take medicines. Make lists to keep on track. Don't be afraid to ask people to repeat what they've said if you don't remember. Keep your daily schedule the same as much as possible. Get plenty of sleep and rest. Some people feel anxious, afraid, or depressed once they find out they have cancer. This is very common and understandable. Keep a journal about how you're feeling and discuss with your doctor or nurse. If you have any of these symptoms, let your doctor or nurse know. You may need medicine to help balance the chemicals in your brain. If you ever have thoughts about killing or hurting yourself or others, go to the nearest emergency room right away or call 911. If you're given medicine for depression or anxiety, always take it exactly as your doctor instructs. Talking to other people about the side effects you're having can help you cope. Attending support groups, in person or online, with other people that are going through the same things as you can be helpful. Your doctor or nurse can provide a list of support groups in your area. Having cancer does not mean you have to stop living. Our goal is to give you information that can help during this process. Ask questions about things you don't understand, even if you think you have before. We're here to help and give you as many answers as possible.